Amen. You guys may be seated. Thank you, worship team. I just love the sound of those keys, Mr. Rodney. It's amazing. Uh, well, we're going to continue here. As we move on, I, I want to mention we're actually going to cover a few announcements here, and then we're going to be talking about small groups, and then Pastor Nate's going to be bringing the word. Um, before we go into some announcements, though, if you're new here or if you feel new here, I want to invite you to fill out that guest card on the seat back that's in front of you. Just fill it out, and you can drop it in the offering bucket when it passes by in a little bit. Or you can take it to the Connection Center in the lobby. And the reason for that is because we have a staff person that wants to connect with you and help you connect to this body and show you what's next. Because if you feel new here, that means we haven't done our job of saying, hey, get acclimated, get connected, get life. There's so much life to be found in this body. So much life beyond just a one and a half hour weekend service. So if you're new or feel new, do that. I want to mention one announcement. We're going to be hosting Financial Peace University starting February 23rd. This is the Dave Ramsey Get Out of Debt program. Get prosperous. Uh, save, live better, all that stuff. Uh, he says, uh, he's got a lot of quotes. I don't know very many of them, but they're all good. So come back on the 23rd and hear some of his quotes. Anyway, we're hosting this, and Ben Berjana is going to be facilitating this class, but here's what you need to know. What you need to know is when it starts, which is the 23rd, it's going to happen every week, Sunday night here, here in the church, and it costs one, a one-time fee of $99, and there's a whole bunch of things that that gets you. And that, that's, a, that's a rate for a single or a couple, I believe. But just jump on the website. We've got the link on there, beyondchurch.org. You can read up on it, register, and be excited for that. If you want to see financial, just get out of debt, financial freedom, that's why he calls it Financial Peace University because it's, it's how to live a peaceful life financially. And then uh, we have an announcement about our worship team. They're going to be hosting auditions. Check out this one-minute video. Hey church, this is Juan and Michelle Preciado, and we're the worship leaders here at Beyond. We're going to be growing our team and we'll be hosting auditions very soon. So, if you're interested, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for drummers, acoustic and electric guitar players, keys, male and tenor vocalists, and any other instrument. So, if you play another instrument that's not listed on here, bring it on. We'd love to hear and see how we can fit you on the team. So we're looking for people who can bring their gift of honor and excellence in worship to this platform. So bring it to the auditions on February 16th from 1 to 3 p.m. We'll be at the info counter right after service. So stop by for more details and sign up. All right. So you heard the man. You have officially been invited, the man and the woman, to audition. And, uh, and he did give that open invitation or an instrument that's not listed. So... Hey, bring it. I want to know by a show of hands, who thought of a harmonica when he said that? Who thought of a banjo, a flute, a harp? I thought of a harp. And if you have a harp, bring that harp. Let's go. A cowbell. No. <laughs> Joe Costello, more cowbell, please. I know you can bring it. All right. One, one more bigger announcement. I'm going to welcome, why don't you guys welcome Landon up here. We're going to be... Landon, thank you. Hey, thank church. you. This is we we have out. offices door to door up here in the lobby, at, or up, in the, up here, and we have a good time together. But we're going to be talking about small groups, and we're giving small groups a center stage moment in today's service. This is a comprehensive mm. announcement presentation because small groups deserves that. They do. They do. And also, I know you needed a, a Dave Ramsey quote. I've got one for you, Jake. Okay. Dave Ramsey says, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Come on. Ouch. Come on. How true is that? That's true. I'm so registered. come to Financial Peace and stop doing that. All right. All right. That applies to go. me for sure. Yes. Okay. Small groups. All right. So 
guys, here's, here's the deal. We got our cue cards. Excuse me if I read from a few of these things, but there's just, this is important because small groups are not just some social club, but there is so much purpose in life found in small groups, and we're going to talk about why small groups, but man, we're kicking off the 2020 small groups today. You can go online. You're going to see all the different groups that are available. You can read up on the bios and stuff like that, but um, this is this is doing life, doing life together with people. Yeah, it is. And listen, small groups, We, t- yeah, if you've been here for any length of time, you've heard us talk about small groups are coming up. Well, today's the day. And we do this not to be annoying, but because this is so important. Small groups are the place where you have to come because there's life found in you. Believe it or not, you're alive. You are sucking oxygen right now, which means there's life in you. And that life is to be shared, not your oxygen necessarily. But the, your life is to be shared with other people. And their life is to be shared with you. If not, you're going to find yourself dried up, uh, and, and there's a place, there's going to come a time in your life when the unity that you find in small groups, you're going to need. You need it. And if you think you don't need it right now, then there's going to be some time in the very near future where you need it. Small groups are huge. It's who we are. This is why we talk so much about it. It's what we do. We were keeps, talking to, Keeps you from doing life alone. It does. It does. And if you look at this picture right here, uh, there's a few things that you notice. Jake noticed something about, look at how the kids are just kind of watching how community is done. He also mentioned how there's no iPads or, or phones in their hands. Praise God. Straight up. Small like, groups are a place. Community is hard to find among children these days. True community, man, if nothing else, look at that. That's, kids are learning what it really means to have community. That, that's much more spiritual than what I saw. When I look at this, it just makes me want to punch Scott Price right in the neck <laughs> for that ridiculous yard. So if you're oh. into nice lawns. His lawn is more comfortable than my bed. It is. I actually, when I go over there, I like to just lay down. I don't bring a chair. I just lay on the grass. So, But you do have to, like, bring a vacuum and pick up any Dorito crumbs that you leave behind. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on, that's not true. He let me hit a golf ball out of that yard. Can you believe that? Oh, yeah. So he's cool, too. Believe it or not, if you're really into that, Scott's uh, is one of the small group leaders, so whatever. You can join his group if you want. So. so small groups help us grow larger and smaller at the same time. You know, it, when you find community in a smaller group, you're, you're actually, we're growing smaller so we can grow larger. And we want to grow smaller because there's no way I can have a relationship with 300, 400, 500 people, mm-hmm. but I can with 10 or 15 or 20 right. people. Yeah. And, and why do we want to grow larger? It's, all, it's about the mandate. It's not so much about numbers like let's go large. It's about how many people can we reach as a church. Right. And we're sold out to knowing him and make him, making him known. Yeah. Making Jesus True. known to people when they can when they can know Christ, yeah, change their life. It's so true. And on this next slide, to talk about some of the things that, like, you, you need to know why small groups, why we talk about this so much, and we're hitting some of these things, but relationships. Relationships are so key to your life. And not just any relationships, the right relationships. And what I love about small groups is it's a thing that we kind of launch here from a local church where you get tied in with people who you need to be in a relationship with, Right? Um, and so you, you form these relationships with each other that you can't just form anywhere else. People who think they can do it on their own or they only need this person or that person, man, you need a group of people in your life who you can lean on and they can lean on you. You do. And this is what small groups does. And it helps connect you. It talks about connections here. I mean, a lot of these groups are found around, you know, you'll find groups that you have common interests with. Like, and, and that's okay. Sometimes in the past we've made these groups about uh, meeting new people, and it's, you're going to meet new people organically through this is, is the good part. But you're going to find new people that you have a common interest with, and, uh, and the one thing that we all have a common interest in is Jesus. And so with all the, all the values and all the, all the things that we bring from our life and people bring from theirs, we have that one common thread of Jesus. And what happens is uh, these aren't like groups where we get together and have Bible studies, but what can happen is we have talks about Jesus or real life things and the word organically through the relationships that we form because of what we like to do and just hanging out. That's the best time to have it, and, to, and that's how it happens the best, in you my know, opinion. Just a quick note on this, too. Statistically, you stick... You know, I remember several years ago when we did groups and 
we invited uh, some people to our group that were not church-going type people. In fact, they would, they would have called themselves atheists at the time. Well, they, they connected through small group, but they didn't come to church yet. And eventually they started coming and they became consistent, faithful worshipers of Jesus. And the entry point was small groups. Man, we want this to be a comfortable thing for people to just come in and just have friends, yeah. do life. Yeah, for sure. And one of the other important things on this is this is how we care for people in the church. I mean, a lot of times in a lot of places, maybe maybe you've seen this in, in your church history in the past, that like the church, like the pastor, the staff is going to, how, how is that one pastor going to care for every single person in the church? That's not how church was ever meant to be. The church is supposed to care for each other. You are the church. I am the church. So in small groups, this is how we facilitate pastoral care. We take care of each other. If someone in my group goes into the hospital or they're having a baby or something's going on in their family, you know who can help? I can help. I'm in a relationship with them. And it's not just me. I'm, I'm a small group leader, but it's not just me. It's anyone in my group. And so, man, if you are looking to, I, yeah, I'll preach. I'll pre- Let's go. We'll preach on small groups right now, all right? But I'm, I'm saying right now. This is hugely important because I'm telling you, I've said it, I've said it already, you're going to come up to a, a time in your life where you're going to need someone that you can lean on, that you can rely on, and small groups are going to be where you find that. And with that, you know, you may have had a small group experience in the past that was actually very negative, and that's common. Uh, but allow the Lord to breathe on it and give you some fresh light on this. And even for our church, the way we've done small groups we, we want to do it better and better every year. And, and there may have been times where you personally were in a small group and you felt like you didn't get cared for. Maybe you had a hospital thing pop up or had a baby and there was no acknowledgement or whatever. Man, I just want to ask you, give, give this another chance. Yeah. Because the heart of this really is that people, the church would care for the church. Yeah. And it's, it's truly the only logistical way that that's going to happen. Pastors Nate and Evan are not going to be able to go to the the host, every hospital visit and everything. And man, when you get to serve and be the church, how much, how fulfilling is that for you? It's true. It's true. Uh, so a few more logistics. We are doing these every calendar year. So 2020, here we go. They're open and groups are meeting starting soon, like right now, this month, I think starting in February. But 2020, January to December, um, join a group at any time, switch at any time, and there's no hard feelings. The leaders have been told, hey, if people come, test out the group, maybe try a different one, or just group hop all year, whatever. We encourage you to find your spot and stick, but there's no pressure to stay or whatever. Just jump in, but jump in. Jump in. Yeah, what that does is it gives you a get-out-of-jail-free card. If you really don't like a group, you can leave, and we won't be offended. So there you go, right? It's great. What's next? Oh, yeah, hey. So, uh, uh, we've mentioned this, but these groups are relationally driven. So this isn't, you know, we've done this in the past, and we found out, uh, just like he said, after doing this for many years, kind of what, what works best, and we're still learning. But these are relationally driven groups. These, these are event-based. It's not, it's not we're going to get together and study something from the Bible. While that's good, and a lot of things can come from that, we found that it's much better for those types of conversations to happen organically, just through the nature of having relationships and getting to know people. It's hard for me to get to know you when we're coming together to talk about some workbook uh, while there's good stuff in there. I don't really get to know you. Therefore, down the road, we don't really have a relationship where we can open up to each other about anything, yeah. right? Yeah. So these are relationally driven, event-based groups. And man, we have got some events. If you look, if you go, and uh, Jake will probably tell you in a second how you can go and look through all of the groups, there's different events going on all the time. And so you can find the ones that that uh, fit you, suits you. Yeah, and, and each leader kind of, this year we paired up leaders. You'll see that in a second. But each, each group, they're going to have some events in their home, some, you know, out at a restaurant or bowling alley activity, some family events, some couples only. So go, go check out all those things, read up on that. But like he was saying, some are event-based, some in the home, whatever. It's different. It is. Hey, can you show them the slide? to show how they can go look at the groups. Even yeah. right now, in church, you can pull your phone out. It'd be really cool. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so you'll want to search for Church Center, uh, and you can get a link to the app if you just go to groups.beyondchurch.org on, your web, That's on your web browser. But see that app up there, Church Center, Oregon. On our website, beyondchurch.org, you can click through and see all that. Let's just show you the leaders. We have 13 groups this year, and we're just... Wow. 
Yeah, awesome. 13 groups, yeah. and a lot of them have four leaders per group and oh, because we want to be more effective in what we're doing. Uh, so let's name drop these. You can do the first slide. Look at this. We've got a bunch of nickels up here in this first one. Not like the change, like the people. Joe and Crystal and Jonathan and Lauren Nichols, they're doing a married and single group for adults and family. Uh, so that's one of the groups. And like I said, uh, like Jake said, when you, when you go on groups.beyondchurch.org, you'll see these same icons here. When you click on them, it gives you kind of more of a detailed bio of each group. And you can say, yeah, those look like my people. And then you just join that group. And you can see what yeah. they're doing, too. Yeah, so Matt and Abby Nowicki, Juan oh, and Michelle Preciado. Coordinated stripes that right. day. Well done. Good job. <laughs> He's not this, wearing his preaching shirt. Oh, but yeah. he is today. Oh, he is today, though. He's got it on today. Here. <laughs> that is amazing. This group looks like a winner down here, just to me. I don't know. They look good. but. Um, and then we've got uh, a bunch of Zolly coffers there. Uh, Ri Richard and Miranda said the other day, who is Richard Zolly Coffer? I've never called him that in my life. That is Zolly. His name is Zolly. So... And, uh, and the Dickies as well there. So what's next? More Who's slides. next? F f the no, other short, oh, yeah. I'm not going to shortchange my group. I mean, like, it's just a given. Like, you'll probably want to be in my group. I get it. Okay? <laughs> I don't want to take advantage of having the mic up here, though. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then Philip and Mona Parker in the upper left with Kevin and Heather Wyrick. Yeah. Jose and Michelle Medina and Ben and Kenny Bourgeon. Oh, that's a group right there. Yeah, I like those people. Kyle and Kylie Morris, Jeremy and Amanda Reese, bottom left. Yeah, they're doing specifically a young adult, single or married. Uh, but you can kind of see what some of these groups are about. Some of them are uh, just for specific things. And then, Do who's whispering at me? Docky and Crystal Brazier and Rodney and Aaron Huckey. Man, that's a great group right there. All those people, I was in, they were leading youth group when I was in it, so... They've seen things. They, they know things. So. Pastors, Nate and Evan Schlegel with the junior high students again. Oh, yeah. Then we've got the Hatmans, Chad and Chelsea, and Todd and Crystal. Yeah. That's a man. I kind of want to join someone else's group See, going through all these. And then Sheena and I will be paired up with Adam and Shiloh Workman. Except that group. I would not join that group. Yes, you will. <laughs> you're coming to that one when you're not meeting. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then uh, our youth pastors, Ben and Joni, doing a youth small group. Yeah, I think we've got one, one more, more, too. Yeah. Oh, they get their own. They Spre get their own Scott slide. Price, are you kidding me, gets his own. Why don't you just, they should have taken this in his yard. Are you kidding me? We got the Prices, who are uh, excellent leaders and uh, teaming up with uh, Levi and Lakin Smith, just ditching our group and joining up another. I see how it is. So. Gotcha. So. Pastor Nate's probably tapping his foot. Get off the stage. Yeah. Last thing, last thing, and then we're going to give, but seal the deal. Head over to the, the website. You can show that final slide again, guys. Look up the Church Center app for simplicity or just the web browser, groups.beyondchurch.org. Check them out. You do got to click and roll. That'll notify the leaders so they can reach out and welcome you into their group. Sound good? Say, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. And if you're not technologically inclined, I bet you can talk to our nice folks at the Connection Center after service, and they can hook you up as well. Okay. Am I done? Thank you. You're Thank done. You. All, right. All right. As you guys are preparing to give, if you are giving, I want to share James 117. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. He's a good father. I enjoyed several cups of coffee this morning, and it was good. And sometimes I feel guilty about that. But this morning I said, this coffee's good, and it's from God. Thank you, God, for making the coffee bean so I can have bean juice in the morning. It's a, but you know what? He's good. Let's acknowledge him right now as we, as we prepare to give. Heavenly Father, thank you for being so good to us, for bringing people into our lives. We don't have to do this alone. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit with us at all times, but you said, I want to connect you with people, and that's good, and you provided that. We thank you for it. Over these tithes and offerings, we thank you that it is enough to do the mission, the call of the church to reach the lost, to preach the gospel, to disciple people. Thank you. 
Thank you for using these tithes and offerings for your work and your service. In Jesus' name, amen. I love uh, seeing that verse up there. It just reminds me to say thank you. <clears throat> if you're in a battle right now, thank you will put you over. Yes, yes. It'll bring you the victory that you need if um, you begin to find the things that God's been doing, how faithful he's been with your children, with the relationships. I mean, the leaders here, even at church, we just saw 26 couples. Uh, that are stellar and that's it just it's amazing to me people saying yes um, it's just it's, it's, it's incredible so let's uh, just come to the Lord before we get into the word Father thank you so much for being here with us you said that when we gather you would show up so we just ask you Father speak to our hearts be a teacher to us today we just uh, position our hearts uh, in surrender to you We give you praise. We thank you for light. And thank you for victory. Winning. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we were singing this song this morning. It's your breath and our lungs and we're lifted. And we should pour out our praise and we're singing to the Lord. And we're just giving him honor and praise. And I thought it was amazing because um, the Lord just reminded me of that scripture. Uh, he says, when, when I'm lifted up, I'll draw men to repentance. Now, Sometimes we just think repentance means like, forgive me of my sins, you know, like repentance, like I'm a sinner and, uh, you know, like just call up, calling on the name of the Lord for the first time of salvation. But that's, 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 it is true, but it's not the whole thing, right? Repent, you can, repentance is simply to change the way you think. To change a change of mind, the Bible talks about a turn in direction, and so you know I love opening a service with you know entering His presence with thanksgiving and just praise is because there's a lot of times that I need to change the way that I think. There's a lot of things the Bible actually says in Romans chapter twelve that in this world, or He tells us He says, "Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." So in other words, there are pressures around us every day that are trying to cause us to think a certain way. There's life experiences. I don't know if that was me, but there's life experiences that, that happen, um, and they happen in, in such a way that they try to form, form the way that we think. Matter of fact, the longer you walk with the Lord, oftentimes you can begin to um, uh, not trust the Lord, but you can begin to lean just upon your own understanding. This is because you, you've known the word enough. You, you, you know your, what you know. You trust what you know rather than who is the orator of what you've come to know. How many of you know, though, when he teaches you something, the same way that I would teach you or a young man or take your kids through, through something, how many of you know when you go to kindergarten and you find out that one plus one equals two, that's awesome, that's true, but there's more. 
but there's more. And we can hang up at one plus one. We can hang up on things that we've found from the Lord and, and a truth that we know. But God said, hey, listen, I, I, I didn't want you to, that to become your reasoning and, and, and everything you filtered just from what you once knew. But I want you to trust in me, not your reasoning. Because I, wa- I want to build upon what I've, the truths that you already know. I want you to, to, I want you to grow and I want you to be, grow up spiritually from a baby all the way to where now you're looking after other people, right? Because there's a baby Christian, but then there's like a, a, young, a toddler, then there's this young adult or a teenager, and then there's this, this grown maturity. Well, how do you know when you've grown? To, you're, you're chasing the toddler. You're chasing the young, the, the young man, the, the baby. You're, you're changing the diapers, right? And, and hopefully, uh, you know, sometimes we can actually grow up to the point where, where we overgrow. <laughs> we've been in it so long, we no longer, and we're, we need somebody to change our diapers again. And, and uh, what I find is, that, sound, that sounds really uh, maybe dirty or whatever, but the fact of the matter is, let's look at just even how the, Paul talked about how growing up spiritually and how there's a, there's a stage that we should be at. We should be at mature, but oftentimes when we, when we stop and when we're not chasing somebody else, when we have nothing to live for, right, and, and then what happens is, is um, uh, decay sets in in our own lives. You can see this happen in the natural. When, you know, like retirement is a good way, just quote unquote, hear me, hear me out, retirement, like as in I have no other purpose in life. Now I'm not saying changing your passion, but when you have no reason, when you don't see that God's given you this wisdom to be passed on to generations and, and your purpose, when your purpose ends, so will your life. Yeah. Decay sets in. And so, um, anyway, I don't know how I got off onto that. Um, you know, it's funny. Um, it was, you know, you can be real and share some fun stuff. I like sharing. Some. You know, when I was in, anybody ever play sports in here? Raise your hand. I want to see how much sports people, at all. Okay, when you get to high school, right, and, and they say you played high school sports, or maybe it could be band or whatever. I never did band or, or other competitions. But whenever you're about to walk out on the court, how many of you ever just felt like you had to go to the bathroom? Come on, raise your hand if that was the case. Like half of you, okay, well, that was, that was me. You're like, man, I just got to go to the bathroom. And then you try to go, and you really didn't have to go, but it was just the nerves, right? But, it, it, but you were so excited. That's how I felt this morning, like down there. I'm like, I felt so nervous. Like, not nervous, but excited. But like, do I have to go to the bathroom? Should I run real quick? You know? Anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. Just keeping it real. So if you see me like, you know, all right. Um. <clears throat> Invasion. So here, the, the next little bit, we're going to be talking about, uh, probably over the next two or three weeks, we're going to be talking about this invasion. And I love this picture um, because I think it really has, has a lot to do, uh, it really paints the picture well, rather, of, of how the enemy would like to give uh, unto you and me a full scale invasion. Actually, that's the title of this morning's message if you're going to write down full scale invasion. You know, the last week um, for four services, we had uh, Brother Joseph Morris here, and it was, it was great. And, and he was teaching on end times, and he was teaching about what the church should look like and, and things like that. But um, I'm going to ask by a show of hands, how many of you are, are in a moment, I'll ask you by a show of hands, how many of you have ever been into, a, walk into a room, you first walk in, and you sniff something, you're like, What's that smell? You guys smell that natural gas? Like, have you ever walked in a room and you walk in and, and people are just in there just like, they don't even know it. But it's, it's like you walk in or paint fumes, you know. Uh, I, I had that happen plenty of times, painting for many years where I'm in there. I mean, I've been wearing my respirator all day. It's been airing out, but, but yet I pull my respirator off. I'm thinking we're good. Somebody else walks in and they're like, oh my Lord, it's so strong here. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm having a good time, right? <laughs> But you, rec- you genuinely, you, you don't recognize it. Matter of fact, you walk home, or I had this happen plenty of times where I'd be at home and it'd be in the evening and I'd be laying in bed and my wife said she could, lay next to me, she could smell, out, like when I would breathe out of my nose, she could smell fumes. And it was just, I had gotten acclimated, right? Yeah. Didn't, didn't know it, right? And... Um, and that's a lot of times like where you can, you can walk in on a fresh, a fresh thing and you can sense it right away. You can sense it right away. And uh, how many of you know you're thankful that when you walk in and, and everybody's like, yeah, no, I do smell that. You ever been in that same situation? They go, yeah, I do. And you, brought, you draw attention to what you smell. Then they start sniffing. They go, yeah, I do smell that. And so what happens is everyone begins to investigate where that is coming from because nobody wants natural gas just going in their house, right? And, but yet there's sometimes those ones that go, no, I just don't smell it. And you might have a cold, 
I mean, you know, you might have a cold. If, you're just, if everybody here is smelling it, but you're not, you just might have a cold, right? And so I just wanted to kind of throw that, that, that thought process out there, but I, and I wanted to go back to the last four messages, and, and really not just the last four messages, I want you to check with your heart, and I would like to see a show of hands, how many of you sense, right, how many of you sense that Jesus is coming back soon? I just want to see, show of hands, okay? So you're saying, so, and, and so we have a good majority in here. I don't think everybody in here, but some of you might even doubt the validity of Jesus coming back, and you might be of the church where, where actually it's talked about how you, they've been saying that for years, right? And you might be in that boat where, where you, you are, your, your understanding is what you're leaning to instead of sensing where your heart, where, where God's saying. But you can see the signs of his coming. You can see all of these things. You can see prophecy fulfilled, all these kind of things. And so we know Jesus is coming back. And if you don't, you might have a cold. You might have to check it out, or you might have grown cold. Um, you might have grown cold. You might not like to hear that. Might have, that might offend you. But actually, what we're going to be talking about this morning uh, is offense. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is, because we're getting close, right? Because we're getting close, Satan wants to have full-scale invasion in your life. Full-scale. So the way that he's going to do full, full-scale invasion, you know, the thing about it is, is the Bible tells us that we're not supposed to be ignorant of how Satan works, okay? It's the way that he worked from the very beginning in the garden where he got Adam, really, and Eve offended at God. That's how, that's how, that's, that, that is really the start, to question God's motive. How many of you know offense starts when you question somebody's motive? And so what I want to take this morning, the, the, the remainder of our time this morning, uh, to, is just identify the, the, the dangers of offense. I'm not, talking, I'm not going to talk about you forgiving and this and that and the other thing, because at the end of the day, what I found is when the Spirit of God teaches me, what happens is whoever I receive my information from, I'm surrendering to. I'll say that again. Whoever I receive my information from, I am surrendered to. So it, this, is, this is where if you get your information from, um, you know, uh, from, from what the world calls truth, you, you're, you're, you're bringing yourself underneath of them, and you're saying that's the way it's going to be. If you surrender to your own mind and the way that you think, and you're self-led, and, and, and it's, it's all about self-enlightenment and what you know, that, that's how you're led, by just you all by you, by your lonesome self, or whatever things you partake of, you're surrendered to oftentimes many voices. Many voices. And how many of you know when there's many voices, you're not really going anywhere. Uh, you're not really even set on a true course. And who knows where you're going to end up? But it's so important that we recognize that where we take get our information from, we are surrendered to. And that's why it's so, it would be so important for us to take the word of God, the very word of God, and say that this is going to be authority in my life. Because the word of God is light, it illuminates where I'm at. And it, 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 when I surrender to what God says, I'm partnering with him. I'm coming underneath of him and what he is before you were ever born, before you were formed, while you were formed in your mother's womb. He, he had a plan for you. He appointed you. And I, I don't know about you, but I want to be a part and I want to partner with him. And I want to have access to things. Uh, and I want to I have the one that's stronger than the thing I'm facing, right? God is stronger than that which is stronger than me. How many of you know that? I want access to the, the help, Okay. And so I want, if you have your Bibles this morning, you can throw this up there, I think it's important for us uh, to recognize, again, that our opponent, you know, in this last, these last days, and I love how uh, Brother Joseph Morris equated it to the two-minute warning in a football game. And, and a lot of times we do that, we talk about the clock, and we, we know that time's getting short, and things are speeding up, things happen, are happening quicker, the Bible tells us that, and the time's going to, in a sense, speed up, things are going to happen, the sower and the reaper are going to be walking hand in hand, things are going to be happening quickly, all right? And so in, the, in, these, in these last days, it's important for us to know, and, and when we think about this two-minute warning, and we think about we're on the playing field, which is this planet Earth where God has set us, and he set us in this body, and he set us in connection with people, okay? That's the work of the Lord, okay? And, that's, and the enemy would love to bring destruction in those relationships. He would love to bring offenses in those relationships, but he, as we're thinking about that we're down here on the ground and we're playing and we're doing the audible and, you know, and we're saying blue 42, you know, no huddle offense, the whole deal. 
what you got to realize is your opponent is not just the other team. Your opponent is not just, it's not just me and you. A lot of times we think it's, you know, you look at a football field, next week is going to be the Super Bowl. Did you know that they don't ever play the Super Bowl at one person's home field? Why? Because there would be an advantage there. In what? The crowd. All the voices. All the voices. All the voices. And it says that this in Ephesians chapter 6, that, hey, guys, just a reminder that we don't wrestle against just right here, right? As a matter of fact, this is not our wrestle, right? Our wrestle is, from, is, is against principalities, powers. It's against the fan, It would be the voices, the fans, all right? That which is above that would try to get us to make the wrong call. To make the wrong call. And the thing about it is, is a lot of times we, we're putting each other on, on the gridiron where we're facing each other. And we realize, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've been listening to the wrong voices. You're on the wrong side of the line. Get back over here. Let's go. We're supposed to, we're, we're not facing each other. It, it, it's, it's the enemy. Okay? It, it's Satan. And he's the one that wants to bring destruction. Look at this, 2 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11. He says this. I think this is, this is, uh, this is really key. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11. He's talking about uh, forgiving, talking to the church of Corinth. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. This is Paul saying, hey, if you forgive, I forgive, okay? I, I forgive. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, I did, I did it for your sakes. For your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. So if you forgive, I forgive. I'm forgiving things, and I'm forgiving things for your sake, so you don't, next verse, take up an offense for me. Lest Satan should get advantage, for we don't, we're not ignorant of his devices. This, this scripture is saying, I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forgive. I, I'm going to forgive. I want you to know when I forgive, right? I want you to know you need to forgive them too. And I want you to know that when I forgive them, right, or if you forgave them, I'm going to forgive them too. Why? Because I don't want Satan to get an advantage of me. I don't, I don't want Satan to get an advantage of me. You know what I don't want? In this time, as the time's getting short, Satan would love. He knows the time is getting short, and this is why it's the full-scale invasion. He wants to take an advantage of you, take an advantage of me, and he would love to, to get into our lives, right? And, and, and he uses this certain devices, these certain devices, there's certain tools. He doesn't have an upgrade to his weapon system. He doesn't have an upgrade to his weapons system. Yet, yet, it's still extremely clever. His cleverness, not his weapons, is what allows him to beat us in, at, at any war, right? In, 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 when we face a war, it's his cleverness, not his, de, not his, not his devices that allow you, you and me to get duped at times and lose a battle or, or allow him in. And he says, Paul's saying, hey, guys. I don't want you to be ignorant. We're not, I, don't, I don't want him to get an advantage of us because we're not ignorant of his devices. And so we see here, this is one of the devices that he's going to use is offense. Offense, where I would get offended with you, where you would wrong me and I would get offended with you or, or I would wrong you and you would, and vice versa. Let's see this. John 17, verse 11. This is really interesting. So we see that offense, uh, uh, and say if he could get in there, he would try to cause a division. Try to cause a schism, a schism, a self-wound, self-inflicted, okay? But Jesus is about to go away here in John. He's about to go to heaven. And, and he, before he goes to heaven, he, he gets down on his knees and he prays for you. He prays for me. And it just starts a couple of verses up, but just for time's sake, I want to just pick up here in 11. He says, now I'm departing from this world. He said, I'm going, I'm, I'm, Father, I'm, I'm leaving this world, Lord. And, he's, and he says, but, but the, these guys, these, my friends, they're staying with you. These ones are staying with you. And, and, and I'm coming to you. Father, Holy Father, I just, I ask you, uh, um, Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now, I, I ask you this. I, I know that I can come to you because I have you. He's praying to him. He says, the justice of everything is this. The just of all this is this. Lord, protect them by the power of your name. That they would, they would be united just as we are. This is interesting. When Jesus is about to go, when he, the, the, he sits down with the Father and says, Lord, I'm coming to you, but, but here's my prayer. Protect them and let them be united. 
Let them be together, not divided, not, not offended, not sell, but, but just even as we are. Even as we are. I want to hit, just take a moment on that even as we are. How are you united with him? We were singing about this this morning, about how great are you, Lord? You know, or what was the first song we were singing? Amazing Grace. Give me the words of the song. I love how you would take my place. That's right. Right? You take my place. That we would be united even as that they would be united even or together even as we are. You know how I'm united with him? He took my place. In other words, there was, there, there was something that he did. He, 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 gave, he forgave so that we could be reconciled. Forgave so we could be reconciled. They're two, two totally different things. But he, he said a, a, as it would be. So in other words, let me say this. Unless, unless I take where my shortcomings are, and, I, and I'm mindful of, of how I've missed it, I will never be able to stay together with another the way I am with Christ. If I come to you and I judge you based upon your actions without the mindset of my actions and my shortcomings and all, I, I'll measure you by a standard that I'm not measuring myself, and therefore I'll put myself over you Right? And when I put myself over you, what happens is I begin to do this thing called accusation. I speak, begin to speak what Satan speaks. I accuse, I, I, I critique, all these things but because I've been placed over you because, because you did this. And, I'm, and the Bible talks about, and I don't have time to go there, we're going to talk about this next week, where Jesus, he tells a story when he says, how many times am I supposed to forgive? Seven times seven? One trans, one, one, uh, the same account, the, the, the disciples said, increase our faith. Increase our faith that we could forgive. Them. No other time did they say increase our faith. And the reason why they said increase our faith at that time, I believe, is because this. Forgiveness, like they saw, they saw miracles, signs, and wonders. But, but forgiveness had to do with them doing it. Listen, God was doing signs, wonders, and miracles, and it didn't really affect them. But what you hold in your heart will affect you. And this is why they, they, they saw this, they realized this, that, oh, my God, I see how, how this is affecting me. And how he talked about, if you don't, and he, he even shares this parable, how if you can't forgive, how can I forgive you? He said, God, increase our, increase our faith. Let us hear what you say. Let us hear what you say. That's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing what God has said. Increase my faith. Let me hear what you say above what I see. Let me hear what you say above, above how I think. Let me hear what you say about them above what somebody else has said. Let me hear what you say above all the rest. And let's keep on going here. It's a powerful prayer that Jesus, he prays before he leaves. And, and I think that we got to realize that there's a couple of strategies. There's a lot more I could hit on, but I want to hit on just, uh, it, it, the Bible talks about how if two are together. Even though we're talking on small groups this morning, that's exciting. But in, in the, the relationships, when two are together, if two agree on anything, the Bible says, here on earth, right? Touch it, whatever touches heaven, if they agree, it will be done for them. Agreement. So Satan understands in this last day, and as his time's getting short, he's going to launch a full-scale attack because he wants your prayers foiled. When things stop working, you leave them alone. I, I, I hunt out in Oklahoma. Um, on the way there, uh, in particular, I turned down this one road, and you really probably don't notice it anymore because the grass is so tall, but there's, there's washers and dryers and cars and, and all kinds of things, and an old trailer and all kinds of things that, that are in this yard, and, and, and you can't hardly see them anymore because they've been left alone. Why? Because they stopped working. Well, when my prayers are hindered, when my prayers stop working, which we know that the Bible tells us that my offense, my offense can hinder my prayers. How, how I treat one another can actually hinder my prayers. There's a, there's a divide. There's something about being together. 
and, and, and a unity that allows my prayers to work and go forth. In other words, I can make a prayer, but if I'm going to allow Satan, give him open access, we'll get to this on Scripture here in just a moment, but if I go up, but I'm saying I'm opening myself to every evil assignment from above, I can drop it out here, right, but it's going to be taken out before it ever, you know, in a sense gets up. Follow what I'm saying? Like, we're limiting ourselves, and we think, and what's going to happen is, you, you'll find that, that with our prayers, you'll leave them alone. The more offended you get with somebody, or the more you're prone to, to and you receive what, what say, not what God says about somebody, but uh, what Satan says, what happens is you'll begin to leave alone for your prayers, and your prayer life. And you won't be able to, you won't be praying big prayers. Your prayers will move to mount, from mountain moving prayers to anthills. Your prayers will become prayers that just you can kick over. Because you're not, a, again, it, it all starts by not being aware of how you've been forgiven. Because you don't see the greatness of, of, of your God and his ability, what happens is, is it moves over and translates into even our prayer life. Okay, let me keep on going here. That was Matthew 8, 19, where he says, if you agree on earth touching anything, or two agree gather in my name, there he says, there I am with them. Unity displays to the world. Unity displays to the world God. There's scripture for that. That our unity, John 13, 35, that it would be our love for one another that people would know. They would know him, and they would know that we are followers of Christ, and, and they would see God. God would be on the scene from what? Love for one another. So Satan knows in this time, I need, to, I need to kill your prayers, and I need to get the world to see everything but him. Let them just see you, and how there is no difference between the world and Christ's followers. Let's just make it all look the same. Let's make it to where their prayers don't work. Let's make it to where they're, they're not approaching God with boldness because they have to approach him based upon their own self-worth because Guess what? If I approach him, uh, and I can't because I see my shortcomings, so I stop approaching God. Otherwise, I'm a hypocrite. But I'm willing to hold to this offense. And so he's trying to get, he, he, he's working overtime by simply suggestion. By simply suggestion. No, no, you don't know what they did. I'm telling you. Just keep on going here. James chapter 3, verse 16. James 3, 16. You have your Bibles, you, it's great to write in them because I'm telling you, the Lord will speak to you concerning a lot of things. Uh, and I, why don't you tell, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Turn to your other one and say, I'm glad you're here. Because I needed to hear this. That's right. Because I needed to hear this. This is James 3.16. For, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work, it says. Let's start in verse 13, James 3, verse 13. 316, that, that's where we're going to get to here in a moment, but 313. It says, who is wise? Who is a wise man and a dude with the knowledge among you? Like, who is wise? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, Glory not and lie not against the truth. Here's what I want to hit on verse uh, uh, 14. I want to stop here. You know you can lie to your own heart, but your heart won't lie to you. You can lie to your heart about not being offended or not. And we'll, we'll, we're going to expose some of the offense. And here's the cool thing is a lot of times when light comes, we can make the right choice. How many know that's true? Like, oh, yeah. You want the green one or the red one? Well, it's been really dark, so I... I uh, I'll take that one. Well, did you want the green? You can't, you can't make the right choice in the dark. You're just guessing. But when light comes, it's like, oh, yeah, that's the one I want. I don't want the green one. The green one's all rotten. The green, you want the green one or the red one? Well, you didn't talk anything about the, this green apple's all rotten, and this red one is perfect and whole. You might like green apples, but when, you say, when I ask you, do you like the green or the red one, and this green one's rotten, because now that the lights are turned on, in the past you would have picked green. But it's got a worm in it. It's rotten. It's bruised. Which one are you going to pick? The red one. Why? Because that's the good one. Because now you're open and you can see clearly. 
And that's what's so amazing about God's word. When light comes, what happens is, is and, this, it, w- and when he's lifted up, what happens is I put him up there. I, I put my, it brings myself under to where now I can receive from him. Again, what, where I receive my information, where, what, who's over me is what I'm surrendered to. I give him authority in my life to bring me a truth that I can now act on. All right, let's keep going here. He says, uh, but you can lie to your heart. Uh, you can lie, but your heart won't lie to you. You can say, you know, I'm not offended. I, I know a lot of, you know, we always think girls. I mean, you know, girls, you know, like school girls, like fighting and all that kind of stuff. Drama. And I told my boys, I said, I'm going to say a mouse came out of a kid's locker. And they said, he was screaming. I said, we're going to have to change that, screaming like little school, school boys. But anyway. Um, but, but. At the same time, you understand, like, a lot of times, girls, like, young girls, girls talking is really associated with, with drama and gossip and, and all these kind of things. Now, guys may not, maybe not run their mouth as much, but they'll hold things oftentimes in their hearts. And, and they won't tell you. They'll say this, eh, no, I'm good, we're good. Really, we're good. But yet, but yet you hate your brother. You say, I don't hate him. Well, hate just means love less. Love less, just to love less. Like, is there any relationships, guys, that you once had that something happened that your love for them is just less? Love less, I'm just loving less. Like, when I see him, I'm not like, hey, bro, I'm more like, I'm gonna keep this conversation going here because I just hope they keep walking. But, I, but, I, but I'll be cordial because guys are just cordial, right? Guys are guys, guys. they're going to be cordial, we're not going to let little thing, but yet we'll hold on to them, and they'll drive a wedge, right? And so we see that, we see that Satan, let's keep on going here, verse 15, the wisdom descends, he says, uh, don't lie against the truth, he says in the end of verse 14, he says, the wisdom, there's a wisdom that descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. So when I take my, my cues from what I see, Sensual, how I feel, how he calls that devilish, okay? Because there's a lot of times, did you not see what they did to me? You know how that makes me feel? When I take my keys, let me tell you, you, you're right. You are absolutely right. It's actually wisdom, but it's not from above. In other words, it makes sense. You, you, you go talk to somebody, can you believe that they did this and they, and they didn't do this and they didn't pay me? Can you believe that they had me come do this and then they did this to me? Can you believe that? And you know your friend would say, yeah, what, what, a, what a loser. Yeah, that, you know, that guy, whatever. That's wisdom. This is why, this is why offense is so dangerous because it makes sense. And the thing about deception is, it's deceptive. Like, deception doesn't show up with a black cape, right? Deception is deceptive. It's a wisdom, but it's not a wisdom. It's a voice. It's the voice of the ones and the fans. Hut, 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 hut. Oh. oh, I thought you said hut. I thought it was on three. I heard it three times. Got to watch the ball, and the ball moves, right? We teach our kids that, but, but they heard something else. I, I promise I heard it. Don't be getting mad at it. I heard it, you did, and we made a move based on what we heard. It made sense, but it was the wrong voice. So this is how Satan works. It makes sense. I can't believe they did that to me. But he says this, verse 16, but where there's envy and strife, there is confusion, when there, where there's envying and evil strife, there's confusion. Let me, let me define this. It, that word means simply instability. Confusion, like, like you're coming like, ah. It's a state of confusion, disorder, disturbance, or confusion. There's, there's a lot of noise there. There's a lot of noise. And that word there is the only other place that that is used is in James. Okay? And how many of you have ever heard this, this verse where it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways? Right before that, it talks about, in James, it says that, that he's driven about by the winds. He's like a wave, tossed to and fro. Can you, can you hear a storm? 
I mean, a storm that's driving a wave. They're, 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 you, you, you're, just, you're just hearing one thing. You're over here. You're over here. You're listening to every... Listen, the wave is driven by the wind. The wave is driven by... Yo, bag of wind. The wave is driven. A double, this is what he's saying. That this is what you open. There's confusion. There's lots of wind. There's lots of noise. There's lots of voices in this place where there's strife and confusion. I can't believe they would do that to me. These are things, these, there's conversation with, with yourself. And, and the worst thing is when it gets conversation with others. And now you have two people reasoning together. For, he says there's confusion, okay, and, and there, um, there is every evil work. Now, every, you know what every means? You would say, oh, every, it means every in the Greek. It means individually and collectively. Every. It, it, the way it would be defined is every evil work. There is every individual work, like, and work would be a completed task. There is an assignment in every evil work. That means there's an assignment on your children. There's an assignment on your finances. There's an assignment here. There's an assignment there. There's an assignment on this, coming to steal, kill, and destroy. How do, how's the devil want to work? Well, he's going to work on, he's going to do a lot of singular, as in, individual assignments to take out this, take out that relationship, take out that, get offended with them, and you know what, let's make, while we're working on that, let's make sure that you go, we're there, and you go there, and you go there, because guess what, they opened themselves and said, have your way, I'm going to side with you, I'm going to side with you, I'm going to side with you, and the most powerful thing The the most powerful Satan can ever be is when he's partnered with your mouth. That's where authority is enforced. That's where authority is released is when I'm partnered with him with the words of my mouth. When the words of my mouth are the words of his mouth, what happens is I'm releasing the plan of the enemy all over in my life. What does his voice sound like? Revelation chapter 12 tells us that the, the accuser of the brethren was cast down. If you hear accusing, recognize this. Just Satan's talking. And he'll build a case. He'll help you build a case. He's really great. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians, he says, hey, um, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Have you ever heard this? Maybe it's a good, people say that to marriage couples, just don't let the sun go down on your wrath and give place to the enemy or give a foothold. If you want to write down that scripture, it would have, uh, it's Ephesians chapter, oh, I think it's 4. Um, yeah, Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. But he says, leave no place to the enemy. Don't let him have a foothold. Have you ever watched a, a, a movie where they have a courtroom or maybe you've been, and they want to adjourn? Like the prosecuting attorney, basically um, the person on the stand, right? And the Bible tells us that we overcome that same passage in Revelation chapter 12, that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? And so an offense happens, Okay. An offense happens, and, and you say the right thing, right, but, but you're not willing to reconcile. So you let the sun go down on your wrath. It's like when the prosecuting attorney says, uh, I, I call for a recess. Can I get a recess? Kind of had some information come to light, da, da, da. In other words, I'm about to lose this case. But if I get a recess, if I can take them overnight, I can build the case in their mind. And I can partner with them, and I can get them to say, instead of what they know to say, and say I, can, I can partner with them, and they can self-defeat. Don't, let, don't give them a foothold, he says. Let's go back to uh, James chapter um, 3, verse 16. Every evil work. But the, he goes on to say that this, but the wisdom, so here's what we know. But the wisdom that's from above. There's a wisdom that is from above, that is, is pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle. Listen, it's easy to be entreated. When somebody does you wrong, and they come to you because they want a restoration in that relationship, 
How easy are you to be entreated? Let's talk about marriage when something happens. <laughs> Don't even tell me you're going to wait till they cook you dinner, wait till they wash your clothes, wait till, like, what, what are you going to wait till? till? Till whoopee, till this, till what are we waiting for? Are you easy to be entreated? Listen, what you're doing, what you're listening, your full scale invasion. Come have full scale invasion in my life. And Satan wants, he knows his time's short, so he wants to work. He wants, and the way he's going to work, he's going to get in by offense, by accusing the brothers, by accusing them. Isn't that crazy that he, the very author of, of sin, the very author of every evil work, the very author of destruction and death, uh, he's accusing, it was him. It was him. Check, check this out. Okay. This actually happened this morning. I was walking in from back. Will you stand back up? Tommy, I'm going to use you as an example. So I'm coming down this aisle. Worship's going on. So guess what? It's busy. You know why it's busy? Because there's singing going on. And, you know, I saw Jonathan. He's like over here doing this, right? <laughs> Got a little spinning. And, um, and so I'm walking up, and there's a lot of things going on. And because there's a lot of things going on, and I just think this is kind of fun now, to do this, especially to this guy, because he's pretty sharp, right? I was walking up, and I, but I held back a little bit right here, and I tapped him on the shoulder, and then I kept walking, and he's looking, and I just lost it laughing. I was laughing because things were busy. I was able to place the blame on somebody back there. Thank you. I was able to place the blame on somebody else. When I get busy, when you get busy, when life gets busy and everything's going on and everything's about me, what happens is I stop hearing what God says and the Satan is working and tapping things on the shoulder and he's saying, it was them, it was them, it happened because of this, it happened because of that, it happened because of that, and he, and he dupes us. Why? Because it's busy. In the last days, guess what? Things are going to speed up. Things are going to speed up to the, pe to the point where, hey, as you see the day approaching, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves. What's, what's going to happen is we're going to even begin to pull away from the very place where somebody could speak some sense into us and say, do you know, do you hear what you're saying? You need to close the door on that. You need to go to them. You need to go to them. The Bible tells us how to deal with the fence. It tells us exactly how, to, if your brother, if you're hurt, if you're uh, offended, it didn't say come to me, honey. So let me just stop you real quick. We're not going to solve this together. Because this is, this, is, this is not between you and me. Listen, it's really not even between you and them. There's something else in play here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you for a moment. And I would, I would, I would say this to you in the, in the church. I was, I, this, this week, um, I, I, I found myself uh, reading a ton this week, even as it's really busy. Um, and I, I read, picked up this book. Um, on demons, okay? And um, so basically just a bunch of scriptures on how demons work, right? And, um, and, and Brother Hagen wrote this book, and, and it's about a 42-page book, not all exhaustive, but he kind of laid out all these scriptures about Lucifer, about all the demons, and, and, and just what the Bible says, I mean, just verse after verse after verse. And, and then he proceeded to share a testimony, of how one, one time he was in a meeting, and uh, the meeting was closed, and a little girl came up and said, hey, would you pray with me and my daddy? And, and just, you know, and so he got down on his knees uh, on, on the front row there, and, and when he got down on his knees, instantly he was in the spirit. In other words, he had, like, was in an open vision. And, uh, and the Lord appeared to him there. And he began to talk to him just about how demons work. Right. And so and, and backed it up with scripture. And so he's like in his he's he's telling this story, but yet he's outlining all along what Jesus is saying. He said, I don't, I'm not going to just take and especially when this book was written back in the 70s, there was a lot of like, you know, um, maybe everything behind every bush was a demon. Right. There's just a lot of 
uh, I don't know, like overemphasis, if you will. And so, the, like, Jesus was coming to him just saying, I want you to bring back, I want you to have understanding, right? Because understanding allows you to not overcorrect. How many of you know, like, sometimes we get in a ditch on anything, and because we get in a ditch, we go, not in that ditch, and we drop all the way over to the other side. But if we saw the center line, how many of you know, where there's understanding, it's easy to put it back on the road, right? So that, so here's this story, of, and he's ta- talking about how, he just, uh, just, it's really great, great read, and, and really just when you see how it's outlined. And one of the things, uh, to, long story short, is he come to the end, um, he's, he said this, that Jesus said that where there, where, where there, there are, okay, he was talking about how, you know how you can walk into a room and you can sense something? Like there's strife. You can also walk into a city. You can, you can drive into a city and you can sense an oppressive spirit. You could sense an oppressive spirit because, and the reason why you can sense it is because you're a spirit being, okay? You don't see it with your eyes, but you can sense it, okay? The same way you can sense God's presence when he rolls in because God is spirit, okay? So you can sense that God is there. But so you, the same way you could sense that the, that the enemy's working or you could sense a spirit over a city or, or whatever. And he said, uh, Jesus told him this, he said, and then he backed it up with scripture, but if, if you see a spirit operating over a city, you have authority over it. But it was set there to operate, and you're going to have to, you're gonna have to be mindful that it doesn't get in the church. So if you see a spirit over a city, and I mean, in other words, a sensing that, man, there's just a very sexual spirit over this city, like just really, you know, maybe over an area, or maybe, maybe, maybe an offensive spirit. Where you see there's been a lot of church splits. Be on your guard. Because the spirit of offense, that which would try to bring accusation against a brother. Against a brother. And, and here's why it's so detrimental in the church and why church splits happen. Paul, or not Paul, but David said, if it would have been an enemy, I could have received what happened to me, but it was my brother. It was the one that I worshiped with. I went to the house. This is, I think, Psalms 55. I went, I went up. We, went, we, we walked the, the, the steps to worship God, and he did that to me. You know, there's things that people do to us in the world all the time, but we don't get offended because our expectation of them is right here. But you know where I get more offended and where somebody does me wrong? Listen, if I tip somebody in the world five bucks at Starbucks, they think I'm, wow, that guy's amazing. Because my expecta- their expectation of me was down here. But if all I give to somebody for their birthday, your 50th, it's five bucks. Because your expectation, because we're tight, and your, expe- your expectation of me is here, and I just did this here. There's this much room for offense. With my family, with my wife, with my husband, with my kids. Kids offended with their parents. Well, everybody else's parents are doing this. And so because there's a tightness, our expectation, our love is up here for them. So anytime something doesn't happen, there's greater space for offense, as a brother in the Lord, as a sister in the Lord, where you know what's right to do and you don't do it. Let me just say, the expectation of everyone in here, if you say, well, you say you know Jesus, the world treats me better than that. Yeah, because your expectation of them is right here. But your expectation of the people in the pews next to you is right here. And we all fail and we all miss it. This is why I got to forgive. That means before I ever get there, aren't you thankful that Jesus forgave before we ever came to him to be reconciled? We would not have ever came. It was the love of God that led to the change. Guys, there's a space. My love, and we say this, but my love has to be for somebody has to become greater than my expectation of them. That's what God is for me. His love for me. Is greater than his expectation for me. That's why he found me. That's how he could forgive me. Because his love was greater. His love was greater. If you're pastor, church, one thing. But if your pastor doesn't come, 
the very place that God has set you, as you see in the Word, He sets you in a body. You don't just discover or de- define or decide. You find out where God says, where He sets you in the body to be fed, to be fit. But because He did, because because the staff, the the staff, the pastor, the church member, the staff, the the, the small group leader, the pastor, He didn't say hi. He didn't come. The very source which is supposed to be bringing life and blessing and peace. Cut off. Cut off. There's people watching online right now. Your, 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 your spouse is here, and you're offended. You're offended, and you're cut off. You're cut off from the Lord. You're not hearing what he's saying. You're, you're, you're left to the depravity, the Bible says, of your mind, and it all makes sense. It all makes sense. But I think what you heard today makes sense as well. It makes sense as well. Why? Because you, it's witnessing here. And you could be restored. How are you restored? By, li- by refusing to listen to that voice. Accusations. Offense. It all makes sense. But it opens the door. It opens the door on you. And every part of your life, singularly and cumulatively, every evil work. When you look at a painting, and someone says, and I'm closing with this, man, would you look at that work? Would you look at that work? Man, what a, what a, what a work, what a masterpiece. When Satan comes to your home with the fence, he's bringing with it every evil work. In other words, a full scale, a full scale singular plan, but yet cumulative, every completely detailed finished design, finished command of the works of the powers of the air, demonic assignments to bring about the full plan of destruction here. The full plan, listen, they've they've been given everything of what they, they're supposed to make it look like in your life. A living hell. Guys, you need, I need, we need relationships. We need each other. And we need, we need what God has given us in this last day where we would hook together. Where we would, where to agree would t- touch anything. Anything. I hate you hearing that word. You may have said. Listen. Anything. I'm going to say it again. Anything. Thing, and it would be done for them. That's what he said. So what is, what's our move? Inventory. Full scale. So I, I'll, I'll, here's what I'm doing this morning. I'm not talking through breast resolution, all these kind of things. I, we're going to get into that in the weeks, next week and the week after. What I'm doing is this. <laughs> Sound of the alarm. Aren't you thankful that somebody just doesn't go, Arr. when the enemy's coming? When the enemy's coming? All it takes is one of them. All it takes is one, you and that one, to destroy, to open you up. Aren't you thankful? I know I'm thankful that God would say, ah, and, and let her run. And somebody that would sound the alarm to, hey, you've been giving yourself to those thoughts. Stop it. Yeah. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> Stop it. Stop the full scale invasion. Send out something else. Use the leash of your mind, your tongue, and say, get back over here. Your tongue, your tongue will lead your mind. When you start talking to to somebody else about what's going on, all you're doing is magnifying that in your own mind. Use your tongue to say, 
get back here when the thought comes about this and that, about them and how they, no, they didn't, and put love in your mouth. Say what God says. I don't know what God says. Then speak as he would. I don't know. He's love. Go to 1 Corinthians and find patience, gentleness. Let that be the leash of your mind. Let, let your tongue pull you back out. Take some inventory. Listen, hit the shelter. Put, up, put back on the armor of God. Right? Because sometimes when we hear, when we hear about Jesus coming back, we think about us going out of here. We think about how he's coming back for the bride. And I heard someone say it like this. Sometimes we think about putting on a dress instead of putting on our armor and realizing that he's coming back for a glorious church, that we here on this earth, we are to be bringing his kingdom. And in order to bring his kingdom, rest assured this, there is going to be some war and, and, and assignments against you to try to take you out, to try to stop. Listen, because your message is more than just for you. This message is for more than just those in this pew. This message is, is, is for all that would hear. According to who? Jesus. That all would hear. Amen? Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Father, thank you for your word this morning, for being a teacher. I just thank you for light coming to our eyes. Thank you. Lord, we just surrender to, to your word this morning. And where you said you, you give more grace to the humble. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Your grace to, to, to see. And Father, not just your grace to see, but your grace to side with you. Lord, we side with you in what you say this morning about one another. And we just say thank you for coming to us today, for sounding the alarm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you got to just have to start attacking back. Um, we have... Maybe you're, maybe you're offended with somebody. One of the things that the Lord had spoke to our heart wasn't, was just that begin to say what you, what you want. I have the best people in the world that have a heart to serve the Lord. Like, like, like my expectation of them, like my, my love for them, my statement about them is greater than any expectation of them. Like my, let your statement about them be a greater statement. Of, call out the things that are not as though they were. And I'm telling you, man, they, they have such a good heart. They desire, they desire this. They didn't see Just speak. Put, put what God says in your mouth. Yeah. Amen. And as we just, before we dismiss this morning, um, we have the band up here, and we're going to close with just uh, sending, out, sending you all out, and they're just going to be playing. But I want, if you need prayer, man, you need agreement in anything the Bible says, again, agree, touching anything. You need some, some prayer support. Man, see God work. If you need healing in your body, or if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you're saying, I, I, I'm here today. Uh, I, I, would somebody make sure that my, my eternity is sealed in heaven? Let me tell you, I'll, I'll be, we'll be up here, right here on the left with uh, a couple of uh, other leaders. We'd love to pray with you. love to see God work on your behalf. And other than that, we love you guys. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget about small groups. Check it out.